What is up YouTube? It's your boy Alex here from Alex AFD, and today we have another video. So I'm going to preface this whole thing by saying right now, this is not a results video. I'm not going to go over like deck lists, things of that nature. I'm not going to talk about this meta, the world's meta results, things of that nature. I'm going to reference the results over here. And I think I need to do that to make my point, but I'm going to be discussing something that I think is like a real issue in our, our community in general, or just, you know, what I'm seeing in the, in the general like buzz and the silo, so to speak. And I think this world and the results that we did get kind of exposed that. And so yeah, I really just, I want to talk about it. So really briefly, just going over the actual formats themselves, what won worlds. I mean, I'm not going to deep dive, like I said, but Shoto Doji won it. Uh, absolutely crazy. You know, I, I would love to see uh, betting odds for, for that and what that would have been at. But uh, that, Jiva, a lot of things popping up in this top eight. Three B heroes. Uh, I think people knew that B heroes was pretty good in general, but to have three of them convert to top cut was really crazy. On the flip side, I know Leonorn had a, uh, a pretty pretty vast representation but not a lot converted into the top eight so again congrats to all uh world competitors i mean just being there alone huge accomplishment being there in japan i'm sure is a great experience for everybody uh congrats to dorian all you guys over here for topping uh this event v premium not too much to go on about i think gold is reascended to the pretty much the highest point in the format with its promo over here maybe we'll see the shake up a little bit after time but we really need something else to to stop the uh the 2020 meta and shout out to the leopold player that is crazy uh over here uh the premium results same kind of thing a lot of diversity here a lot of really good players and Fenrir won I mean this is again another deck that uh I don't think was unknown because uh I forgot his name oh my god um it starts with a C I'm so sorry Cormac Cormac he won BDF uh, BCS Cardiff I think that's how to say it I think that was the one he won so like the list was floating out there more or less and I know he changed one or two things I think but in general I think that people looked at this and it, it was brewing Aaron kind of tossing around some of my play groups and things like that and one of my buddies was going to bring it to worlds but in general the masses didn't really look at this and be like oh yeah this is the this is the deck to bring this is this is it right here so that really kind of brings me to one of my two points and I think the first and foremost uh, is that hive mind is super prevalent in this community and is not necessarily healthy obviously and it's not even true to an extent so what i'm talking about here is a lot of your i'm talking about your average player here that is not exposed to high level playtesting groups or just you know conversations at large you know a regular person just it watches youtube you know plays with their friends go to the locals attends maybe vcs's bsf's like uh, I'm not saying you have to be anything more than that. That's absolutely fine. But I think a lot of those players and a lot of players that I'm talking to uh, and just, you know, interacting with, they have this idea that if a content creator has come out and said this, like a big content creator, which a lot of them are big for a reason, like they, they speak the truth. But unless they're the ones kind of saying it or, you know, there's there's just an abundance of results for it, then it can't be true. Like if you looked previously, I know Katrina was kind of, you know, if you told me a year and a half ago that Katrina would be having two, oops, sorry, two, two results up in the top eight in, in Worlds, I mean, nobody would believe you. These players have all kind of taken unique things to this. Some of them are tried and true. Some of them are a little bit more uh, flexible. Some are kind of like custom homebrewed. But when you look at it, these are all top tier players. They're all playing very different things, different styles. And I think that that player expression, that deck building kind of aspect to it, really came through and really shown uh this year and it was just really fun to watch on stream and to see these results in general so i think this whole hive mind thing has kind of been exposed i think that people are harping and relying too much on results now that kind of brings me to like my second point in general uh something else that i've seen kind of echoing around the community in terms of opinions is that you know this isn't healthy like a diverse format is not healthy and my personal opinion everybody is entitled to their opinion but my personal opinion is that is absolutely not true you're playing a card game with 24 clans whatever it is if every if there's only two or three clans that enable you to truly seriously play this game that's in a bad state that is 100 in a bad state and i know some top tier players are going to say oh look but if i only have those two three clans to play into i could prepare for those matchups and on top of that i could you know tech my deck i can like actually have the adequate practice to have it where you know both of us are at that same skill level and it just really plays out it's a real player skill expression at that point that is true to an extent but that oh my god is so boring i don't want to go and face 50 gridors i don't want to go face you know uh the same culprit over and over and over and have to run the same match and the only variance comes down to triggers things of that nature so i think a better player will still a skill out 
And I think that definitely happened over here. There's really, really good players in the top eight over here. On top of that, a player who has broken the mold and is able to kind of do what they want, still have that skill expression they're looking for, but within a different form, has an advantage over the other player, not in the form that it's rogue or anything like that, but just in the fact that they believe in their deck, they think it's good, they know that it works and functions the way that they are anticipating. And you can see that these decks are completely random. Like a lot of these people were not really expecting Victor, uh, Stephen Lee, uh, one of the best players in North America. The French Katrinas, I don't think anybody expected two of them at least to convert. Uh, the way that these decks are built are absolutely amazing. The player skill of these people are amazing. So I feel like the whole point of this and just my argument in general, is that again break that hive mind mentality build what you want play test what you want like make sure that you are putting the time into it if you really believe in it if you think it is something that is viable it is decent don't be dissuaded don't don't sit here and say like oh look my testing group shits on me for playing on this like why should i why should i even try it? absolutely not like take that thing and make it what you want i know last year people were talking about dave vex what was it the uh the 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 turn skip um oh my god mystery flare dragon and they were kind of memeing on it all of a sudden like you know this guy sat here and brought gear chronicle to relevance kind of throughout the meta and made it like the tier 1a deck essentially got banned out and then steam maidens and so on and so forth essentially what i'm saying is build what you want to build play what you want to play make sure that you are you know within reason like don't don't play something don't try to force something that's just not going to work but you know express what you want to express through your deck choice through your your text through your through your build as well as your player like skill like you have to become better at the game obviously to perform at this level but i think it definitely is possible with a lot more than we truly know and i don't think this format is uh still still not solved and that's really the beauty of vanguard in a lot of different ways it is so cool to see that a game with so many constraints you have to stay within the lines in so many different ways people are able to express their own play style their own results their own decks like just throughout such a like i said a confined kind of environment it feels so different every deck feels so different everybody's still playing by the same subset of rules though so uh i honestly really enjoyed this world it kind of got me sparked up hyped up so if you guys are enjoying this content i ask that maybe you do leave a like on the video possibly consider subscribing to the channel i definitely appreciate it let me know your thoughts down below let me know uh if you are a top tier player let me know if i'm absolutely 100 wrong if you are a more casual player somewhere in the middle totally let me know as well uh, i'm definitely interested to see i want this to be more of a discussion kind of community Community post videos so thank you guys in advance for watching this and this is alex from alex cfp signing out